13 conference tournament champions were crowned on Saturday, and with them, 13 automatic bids to the NCAA tournament. As Selection Sunday beckons, we turn to CBS Sports Chief Bracketologist Jerry Palm and CBS Sports Basketball Analyst Tim Doyle for some perspective. Gentlemen, greetings. Jerry, I'm starting with you. We're going to get to winners and losers in a second, but one thing that Every bubble team was watching on this day was, all right, who's going to get in and steal a bid that they wouldn't get otherwise? NC State, coming from seemingly out of nowhere to win the ACC title, beating Duke and Carolina on the way. Who's going to be the team that gets knocked out because the Wolfpack are in? Well, for me, it was Pitt. Uh, that was my last team in at the beginning of the day, so that's, you know, ACC uh, on ACC crime there, I guess. NC State stealing the bid from Pitt. Um, but it's, you know, that's kind of how it goes. You know, Pitt didn't do enough to get farther up the bracket. Um, and that's just, you know, that's then you are at the mercy of things like this. And we don't usually get bid stealers. I mean, sometimes you do. Uh, but this year it seems to be uh, particularly uh, busy in the bid stealer department. Tim, who do you think's out because NC State's in? That's a great question. I think Indiana State's out. And it's unfortunate, Jerry, because I really want um, to see the Valley get two teams in there. The Valley every year seems to make noise, whether it was Wichita State or Creighton back in the day, or whether it's been Southern Illinois or Northern Iowa. There's been so many different teams from the Valley that when they get in, they're so dangerous, and Drake's going to represent them. But I actually think Indiana State's the best team in the Valley. So, hey, these are the rules. You win your conference tournament, you're in. So I don't know if it's been Steeler, bit Earner, but I just like that we get Jerry Palm up out of the basement. It's his time of year, Jerry, to shine. And this is what he's got the Bunsen burner out. He's got the graduated cylinder. Who's the one? Who's the two? But we know this. I think conference tournaments mm. are going to be indicative of what we saw last year in the NCAA tournament where no number one seed made the final four. All right, so the top seed turvy. Almost impossible to predict from here on. So let's talk about some good news for now, okay? How about a winner from Saturday? Who's your biggest winner from Saturday's play, Jerry? Well, it was NC State. You know, NC State, you had just the 10 seed, go out and win the ACC tournament. And uh, that's just a tremendous accomplishment for a team that was, they won five games in five days. That's, that is really asking a lot. And against the level of competition they had to play, they didn't exactly have a, a gilded path to this championship. They had to go through everybody, and that was a great accomplishment for North Carolina State. And, Tim, I'm with you on Indiana State. It, it kills me that I don't think they're going to make this tournament. That's a good team. Yeah. I mean, and that's unfortunately right. And the bad part about Indiana State is no one will play them. You know, as we look at the bracket and we see, let's just say, a St. John's or even a Northwestern. Ironically, I went to both of those schools and played there. <laughs> but they get to play uh, the Purdue's. They get to play the Creighton's, right? Mm -hmm. And Northwestern beat Purdue. Uh, when I look at the winners, how about Temple? Who saw this coming? Who? Who? The Owls. Who? They have won four straight games. By the way, they were 11 and a half point underdogs against SMU. Win that game. Charlotte. Beat them. Ha, but they're never going to beat FAU. That's the team that went to the Final Four. They were 14 and a half point underdog. They did. This is another school. It's also a little bit an investigation of maybe some shady stuff going on with their squad in different games throughout the year. And they pull it all together. One thing I've learned over the last four or five days, the tournament is going to be upside down, just like it was last year, because teams are going to get hot. You don't see the same continuity. You don't see the same chemistry. So whoever gets hot or the hottest at the right time, that's the team that's going to go end up the furthest. But if we had odds on Temple making the NCAA tournament before the American Conference, I think it probably would have been like a million to one. Like for them to win this many games in a row and they give themselves a chance. By the way, they haven't lost since all that stuff about possible fixing and whatnot has come about. Temple's won since then. Look, we're talking about winners there. I know we got to talk about losers. We already talked about, you know, Indiana State and some teams that, that might not make it into the tournament because, say, like an NC State is in. When I think of a loser from, from this day, it's more about a team who had a chance to win themselves into the tournament and didn't get it done. Now, who do you consider to be one of your bigger losers on this Saturday, Jerry? Well, I'm going with Colorado. Uh, you know, you... They also got a bid stolen, and they got it stolen by Oregon in their league. It's uh, 
you know, that's that was a winner gets in and the loser doesn't. I actually had Colorado uh, as like my second or maybe third team out a couple of days ago, and then yesterday they ended up being the highest seed left in the conference tournament, which makes them in my bracket the automatic qualifier for the Pac-12. Well, they didn't automatically qualify. They got beat by Oregon, and that loss, I believe, is going to push them out of the NCAA tournament. How about you, Tim? Yeah, I, I, I was in New York, and I was at the Ivy League semifinals, and I think the biggest loser ended up being Princeton. They had an outstanding year, and they took on a Brown team that they had beat handily twice. They were nine-and-a-half-point favorite. <laughs> They got smacked around because last year <laughs> Princeton got into the tournament and not only did they get in, they got to a sweet 16. I thought they had kind of the same capability this year. Xavier Lee, their point guard, Cade Pierce, the player of the year in the conference. They, to me, seem like a very dangerous team in the tournament. But today, they got severely outplayed and maybe in other years, if everything would have worked out, maybe they get a sniff but they're not even going to get a sniff as far as on Selection Sunday. Hey, look, you were talking about you know unlikely teams in the tournament with Temple and, and maybe NC State. Brown, how about Brown? Brown coming out of nowhere to upset Princeton, the number one seed. They get Yale in the, uh, the Ivy League final. That's a win and get in, lose, and you're not getting in. But here's the big one. Jerry, your last four in, first four out after Saturday. These are the bubble teams right now. Who you got? Yeah, I actually got Dayton, who would get to play a home game uh, in a first four situation. Uh, St. John's, Northwestern, it sounds like I'm going after Tim here. And then the last team in is Texas A&M, uh, who had a good SEC tournament and needed it to get to this point. Uh, and then the first four out, Colorado, we just talked about in Pitt, uh, losing their bids today. Virginia lost theirs yesterday in Seton Hall, uh, which is a, a team that's Got an interesting resume, but just that they're not a, a, even a 500 team against the top three quadrants, and that's not usually good enough. Tim Jerry's got both your teams in. St. Yeah. John's in. I know, <laughs> pretty, pretty amazing, but we're, they all have the same, same common theme. That's not Indiana State. They're all power conferences, mm -hmm. you know, and that's where I feel for Indiana State. And I do think that there needs to be a bit of an adjustment from the committee to give kind of those mid majors a, like a, a, a chance because no one schedules them. There's no, like, no one's like, perfect, non-conference, let's go to Indiana State, or let's go to Drake. So they have an impossible time building up the important metrics that the NCAA tournament looks at. So I, I say it every year, and I, I'll carry this cross to my grave. Like, I, I just wish there was just a few more opportunities for mid-major teams that went out there and had sensational years. And maybe we give them a spot or two. I don't know how we separate it, because one theme with all those teams out there, they're all Power 5 conference teams. Look, Saturday hey, was, yep. yep. Tim, I got bad news for you. Those opportunities are going to get smaller. Yeah, I mean, this year, true. those teams that won their league don't even get to go automatically, at least, to the NIT. And when they expand the tournament, they're not expanding for Indiana State. They're expanding to get more power conference teams in. So uh, it's, uh, the opportunities are actually going to get fewer uh, and probably instead of bigger. No, you're right. It's just unfortunate because what do we watch in March? We want to see the Cinderella story. We want to see the kid that when he hits a three, his grandmother takes off her wooden leg and drinks a beer every time. Like, those are the stories that we are captivated with <laughs> in the NCAA tournament. Those kind of mid-major stories that we've seen. Sister Jean, Loyola Chicago, if they don't win the Valley that year, they don't even get into the tournament. Sister Jean, who's still alive, God, uh, God bless her. It might be God rest her soul. She may not even be out there right now because that run single-handedly kept her alive. But if they don't win the Valley that year, there's no Sister Jean. There's no Final Four. And more than likely, she's not here. But she is here. We love her very much. Jerry is right. I just think it's unfortunate because it's those Cinderella stories that have, that it really, I think, built the tournament. You know what? To your earlier point, though, the way college basketball looks right now, there's going to be crazy Cinderella. There's going to be one because somebody's going to get hot and somebody that we're not expecting expecting to get hot. That's what I think is going to get hot. We got to go for now. We got a big day coming up on Sunday. Jerry Palm, CBS Sports Bracketologist. Thank you. Tim Doyle, thanks so much. Huge day on CBS and Paramount Plus starting at 1 o'clock with the A-10 championship game, then the Big Ten championship game at 3.30, and then everybody and their brothers and sisters and cousins, too, are tuning in at 6 o'clock for the selection show.